didn't record any sound. So it doesn't really help when you can watch a Zoom, but you can't hear anybody. So I think we are recording. Oh wait, so I'm gonna start out just a little, I actually said this a couple um, weeks ago. I'm sitting out in my garage, by the way, guys, lighting's awful, but sometimes I just like to be outside and that's the beauty of this job is I can literally train y'all from anywhere. So it doesn't matter. Um, you don't gotta look cute or have good lighting to be able to be successful with this and lead a team. Um, but I said this a few Zooms ago and it was the one that I was so excited. I made sure I screen recorded it. I made sure, cause I'm gonna send it to everybody and there was no sound. So drop in the chat. If you have figured out how to use the cash drawing as a way to tap into other people's networks, meaning you're having people post for you something about I've partnered with my friend Tanya, I've, you know, drop a battery percentage if blah, blah, blah. Okay, so a lot of you have. So I would say most of you guys probably have. No, okay, there's at least one no. There's another no. Okay, so that's good, because I'm going to show you real quick. This is going to be like a very minuscule part of this training. Brett's done it a couple of times. Um, but I have not only gained other hosts to post from it. I have gained like several, actually just let me pull up my numbers and see. Cause last time when I started doing the cash drawing, the host to post way that I'm going to show you, I had 2,700 followers. Now I have 2,840 and that was just not that long ago. So literally 140 more people, basically 140 more friends that don't take up space on my friends list. So let me share my screen. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And this comes in handy if you have people, again, drop in the comment if you have people ever that come back and they post for you every single time you post about a drawing. There's only so many products you can have people post about before you're just giving them the same thing over and over. So this is what I do after they've posted, usually just one product for me, I'll give them this, but sometimes if they post it twice, depending on how big their market is, then the post that I'm going to give them, instead of being a product, it's going to say, drop your phone's battery percentage for a chance to be entered into a free $400 giveaway. Sometimes, not many people comment. But majority of people that comment, they do end up posting, which is awesome. So this one was just a couple hours ago, and the only one that posted was her and me, so I'm not going to go comment on that. What I do is I reply to their message, reply to their comment, and I tell them to message me. Because what's going to happen is if you do this a few times, you're going to have, like, Brett one time had, like, what, how many was it? Like, so much. I know you can do it at once. It was, like, 100 people that commented? 50? Like it was, like, 75 people that commented. He could not go message all those 75 people without being blocked, so he had to break it up, which really screws it up for you trying to, like, get your list done in the beginning of the day. So I figured out by doing this, saying message, saying cash, and shoot me a friend request and I'll get you an entry. They message you and they say cash, so you know why they're messaging you because it's the most annoying thing ever when someone says, hey, you said to message you and you have like 15 different ads up, you have no idea why they're messaging you. So anytime I tell them to message me, I give them a specific word that pertains to that post. So any of my cash ones, I just say cash. And then when they message me, I send them a message and it just basically says, hey, every month we do a give back program. All you've got to do to get entered into the drawing is put a small post up on your wall and tag me in it. Is that cool with you? They almost always say yes. You send them a host to post. Boom. Now you are tapping into somebody's market twice. So it makes it super simple. Now, if... If you are not doing great with your host to post, meaning you're just not getting a lot of people to comment. There's a few different things that could be. Um, go eat or come out here and sit. Quietly. Um, we're both in the garage. Of course, my kid's like, oh my gosh, I'm in the house by myself. I can't do this. Um, but finally had someone tell me no after I asked. You know, every once in a while they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So it's, it's not likely. They typically will post for you, especially if you're not spammy. 
um, on your wall. Like if they can go look at your wall and you have it works all over it, there's a high chance they're gonna tell you no. And that's okay. Like we all mark it differently, but just know that from there, you're gonna do a little bit more work to get more hosts to post up where if you are doing what we call curiosity marketing, which is what I teach, you can't go to my page and you have no idea that I'm doing it works. It's not even on my IDS. Um, then people will say yes, just because they wanna know what the heck you're doing. So it's just different forms of marketing. You're gonna, if you sign the most of your people from your posts and your messages and whatever, and you don't need to rely on host to post, don't rely on host to post. There's so many ways to work this. Like you literally can work it however you wanna work it. I teach my team host to post primarily and curiosity marketing because it opens up the door to one, get brand deals with other companies, which a lot of us do on our team, especially through Instagram. Two, to honestly be able to tell people, okay, you can look at my page, you won't be spammy when you join this. I'm gonna teach you how to utilize the free Facebook ad system, which is what host to post is. So it's just a different way of marketing it. Um, but if you are not getting a lot of host to post up and you want to, I would highly suggest getting in the VIP group. I'm gonna write this down so I don't forget to link it to this later. In the VIP It Works training group, there is a link that is basically seven days worth of posts and tells you, okay, interact with 10 people, post this, interact with 10 more people, add 25 people. Savannah's shaking her head because she's done it. If your host of posts are stalling, go do that seven day, basically, we just call it like the host of posts revamp system. And it will just get your host of posts rolling again. Um, so I wanted to show that everything else is going to be about actually boosting your paycheck. Let me read through the chats real quick, make sure that nobody had questions. Jessica, if a lot of people are thinking that you're spamming them, I would look at your page. Um, because you can be posting too much about the business, you can also not be posting enough. There's definitely a fine line between the two. If they look at your page and all you're doing is like sharing videos from other people, not it works people, just in general, like sharing funny videos and stuff, um, how many posts a day during the seven days? I don't remember, Penny, you'd have to go over to the VIP, but I will message you since obviously I'm Zooming with you tomorrow. Um, but anyways, so there is, there is a fine line. Like you gotta post a little bit about the business and that's a good thing. Be confident. I have nothing, yep, if you have nothing about the business, that's what they're thinking. Like, how's this girl, like why is she advertising anything? Because if you go to her page, like she's not, I can't tell that she's any doing anything with anybody. So I would, if you don't know what the five day posting schedule is, you can message me and I'll get it to you. I would highly suggest getting on the five day posting schedule. It's something my, my team created. We roll with it. It works really well. It's just a five day rotation of, okay, day one, you're going to post something positive. Day two, you're posting something funny. Day three, you're posting a business or a product. Day four, you're posting an interactive. Day five, you're posting a call to action. Um, now that's your post and your stories. You can be a little bit more salesy and get away with it. And that's perfectly fine. Um, so I struggled with coming up with content for this. Usually I hear something. I'm like, oh, like that's perfect. This time I heard like 15 different things and they were all in different directions. And I just didn't feel peace about any of them. And then I kind of meshed them all together because the biggest question I get is how do I make more money with this? Um, if you're on my team, you know that we very much preach go for bank, not rank. We push the paychecks. We push, I don't, I don't give a crap what rank you are. If you're not making money, that's what your priority should be. And that's what Brett and I have focused on for a while. And he can tell you it's made a huge difference in our business. Like when I used to just push for, I want to promote, I want to promote, I want to promote. And then I was like, screw it. I don't care about promoting. Like if I'm going to promote, but I'm not going to get the paycheck with it because I'm trying to buy all of it or whatever, um, it doesn't matter. So I... One quick thing. Your, if you have a significant other, they don't care about your rank. They care about your bank. That is so true. I will be honest with you. When she first started and she hit diamond and the income disclosure says, what, just under $2,000 a month. So she hit diamond and I expected that wasn't first, my paycheck. The first, and it wasn't even close. And I was like, all right. <laughs> now, 
turning back to that, the reason it wasn't close is because I didn't promote the right way. I didn't work with people who are working. I built everybody myself and I lost diamond. So yes, I was diamond. I, I got diamond and I think I maintained it for one month, lost it for over a year, got it back again, just built a bunch of people, maintained it for a couple months, lost it. So I was never a strong diamond because I never built the right way. Like if you're not working with the people who are working on your team and you're building them as people, not building their businesses for them, your paycheck is not going to reflect your rank. Now, if you are working, your paycheck still won't reflect your rank because it's going to be bigger than your rank. I can tell you, I don't make $1,900 a month. And Brett's pretty thankful that I don't at this point in the business because I've been in for like four years. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you're been in for four years and you're at 1900, that's awesome. I'm saying for us and our family, I had a full-time job before this. This is not a side gig for us. This is, I'm doing it full-time. Now he's working to start doing it full-time. I mean, I don't know if anybody else is on here and you're, you have kids. Most of us can't survive on $2,000 a month total household income. So for us to be able to do this full time and him to be able to do this full time, we've got to really focus on that paycheck and grow it exponentially for him to be like, okay, I'm going to walk away from healthcare and what else does a, like a normal job provide? I can't think. Healthcare, 401k, 401k retirement. retirement. Like you're not, you've got to look at the bigger picture, not just what the paycheck is that you're actually bringing home from your regular job because you have all the extras that you're not figuring in. So those are the people I'm talking to on this today. If you're in it for an extra few hundred dollars a month, that's awesome. You're welcome. Stay on. You're going to get something that's like an aha moment. But if you're on here and you're looking for full-time income, meaning you're looking for $5,000 a month or more, put a one in the chat. You guys are who I'm talking to because I can tell you that is not an easy number to hit. And I would even say 5,000 a month is not like, oh my gosh, I'm rich. It's like, okay, I can live. And then I probably need to work towards double that if I want to live comfortably, depending on where you live, obviously, and how many kids and all that stuff. But if you're wanting to do this as your only job. So that's what I'm talking about today is doing it as your only job. And the first point under that is the short answer. To increase your paycheck, you need to enroll more people, period. You need to enroll more distributors and more customers. Now, that's the short answer because that is, I feel like that is <clears throat> a very small part of this. There's so many things that affect your paycheck. Well, I wouldn't say, okay, there's more things that affect how many people you're actually enrolling than just skill set. You can know what to do, but if you're lazy and you have a crappy attitude, doesn't matter how many skills you have. Um, now, having said that, I do think skills are important. I have some links I'm going to drop for you guys. They're all at once, so I'm gonna go black for a second. Hold on one sec. I know it's always easier than me just trying to tell anybody like, oh, get this book and do this. If I have a set of links, if y'all can, I would copy and paste these to your notes section or something right away. Um, they're all the links of all the resources I'm about to give you guys. But I didn't want you to be having to try to write them all down real quick. Because I know from being on the other end of the Zoom where I'm not the one doing the training and people give me all the resources, it's really hard to catch all of them. So it's easier just links, copy, and then you can listen. Um, if you're lacking with skills, go follow Ray Higdon. I will tell you this till I'm blue. As far as skill set when it comes to network marketing, he is the top of the top. Except if you're looking to build in person, and then I would say Eric Worre. If you don't know who that is, that's fine. He wrote GoPro. Um, Eric Worre is like the network marketing master if you're doing old school. Ray Higdon is the network marketing master if you're trying to build online. So I would follow him. I linked his profile. He does a lot of free trainings, like several a week now. It used to just be one. And then he also has a coaching group that I'm a part of. I know Savannah and Janice are a part of. There's a few people in here that you can pay to like get deeper coaching from him. Um, so first thing is just, enroll more people. Okay. The second thing, however, is drop me in the chat. What is your goal for your monthly income? I don't care about rank. Like I said, I know plenty of people that 
make way more than the average rank. I know plenty of people that make way less. Brett just told you I made way less when I hit diamonds. What is your goal for monthly income? I can tell you ours, $30,000 a month. Fifty five hundred, twenty five hundred, two thousand, thirty thousand, seventy five hundred, two thousand, fifty dollars. Hey, that is a good start. And you started like a week ago, so that's perfect. Ten thousand, eight thousand, four thousand. Now ask yourself the question. You can answer this if you want. You don't have to. Um, ask yourself. Am I working hard enough? If I was working for a boss, would they be able to justify paying me that amount? I can tell you I don't work hard enough to make $30,000 a month. Would I like to and do I love to complain about not being there yet? Yes. If I sit down and think about it from a boss's perspective, because I've been that person that decides if I hire or fire you and if you are working enough to earn your paycheck, I wouldn't pay myself. $30,000 a month. Do you work hard enough at this business to make triple pay or ambassador pay? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them how many times you completed the list today. Uh, no. <laughs> and I'll give everyone a little slack today because it is a la it's Labor Day. So it's a holiday for us. It's actually our anniversary. So we were pretty lazy today. We decided because we were gone for a month, we celebrated our anniversary while we were gone. We did so much stuff. We spent a ridiculous amount of money that we do not want to talk about. Um, just the month that we were gone doing things. So we had already decided today was basically going to be a lazy day. We were going to do nothing. But on a normal day for you, do you work hard enough to make that paycheck that you want? But how many of y'all love to complain, even if it's just to yourself, oh man, this business just isn't working. I'm not X, Y, Z yet. Because it's a lot easier to blame the business than it is to blame your own work ethic. So the second point of how do you grow your paycheck? Focus on your work ethic. Focus on your habits and what you're doing every single day because that's what's going to increase your enrollment. Um, let me just... Okay, so a couple, okay, a couple ways. If you're like, well, I think I'm working hard enough. I'm not sure. Like, I feel I'm working hard enough. Ask yourself this question. Again, not today. Or actually, ask yourself it today. That's fine. But next time you're complaining, ask yourself, have I done my daily task list yet? If your answer is yes, then you can ask yourself, okay, have I done it consistently for the last 10 days? Have I done it every single day? If you ask yourself, have I done my task list yet? And the answer is no, ask yourself, have I taken a nap? Have I watched TV? Have I scrolled on Facebook? If you've done any of those three things and your task list isn't done, you have no right to complain about not making the money you want to make. And I'm preaching to myself, nobody's business. Um, so you really just, it comes down to you have to make this business a priority. Um, there's a few books that I put in there that specifically talk about habits. And these are ones that I read early on. I've reread them. They are amazing. It's just glitter and crap. <laughs> We're in the garage and there's like stuff all over the table. Um, Atomic Habits, The Miracle Morning, and Secrets of a Millionaire Mind, and then The Compound Effect and High Performance Habits. Again, I put the links all in there so they're all included in that one little thing. Just make sure you copy and paste them. You're right. It doesn't have anything to do with the business. The business has been proven, but we are going to talk about that in a minute because um, there is a such thing as the fact you don't believe in the industry is why you're sabotaging your own business. And that's okay. We all work through different things. Triple written. That's awesome. Trouble getting product hits. Um, again, if you're talking about like you're posting products on your own wall and people aren't commenting, they're not going to. That is something that you really got to get good at marketing versus sales. Um, but again, if you're happy with your enrollments, and you're doing attraction marketing, which is, yes, you're posting at works, but you're doing it in a non-spammy way, as non-spammy as you can with still posting at works, um, and you're just not getting hits on certain product posts, that's okay. People are still going to see them, and you never know. They may not tell you that they inbox you because of that post, but that may be why they inbox you. I can tell you, again, I don't post at works at all, 
but I do make my coffee and which I'm drinking my cappuccino right now because I was already starting to like fade. I make it almost daily in my stories. A lot of times I'll message someone off a host to post. They won't message me back. A month later, hey, can I get a sample of that coffee that you're posting about? They saw the message, but they wouldn't have never messaged me if they didn't see one of the products. So I'm not saying don't post about the product. I think you should be posting about the product. There's just a smart marketing way to do it and a salesy way to do it. And I don't say salesy in a bad thing. I don't think sales is bad. It just, do you want to work more on the sales side or more on the marketing side? Like we each get to choose how we work the business. Um, the third thing, this is where I'm going to get into more, more of the beliefs. You can work all day long. And I, Brett doesn't agree with this hundred percent and that's okay. I do. And I've seen it over and over. If you have a crappy attitude about the business, about the products, about whatever, the person that you're talking to can feel it. They can feel your energy level. Now, one, the, the main reason I believe this is because a lot of what we do is voice messaging. I don't care how much you fake it. If you really have a crappy attitude, they can hear that. Now, if you're just sending text messages, you can debate that. I don't think just text messages work as well. I think you need to get the voice message in there, put some personality in it. Um, and I know that my confidence level and my excitement go up when I'm talking to somebody versus just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. It just does. Um, so one, you want to use a product consistently for at least three months. I can tell you I've used every one of our products except for the Sleepy Tea. Just kidding. Sleepy Tea and the Dr. Nassif stuff. I've never ordered that, but I just won the Dr. Nassif stuff, so I'm excited to use it consistently. Um, the Sleepy Tea I just ordered. It's on my this month's auto ship, so I haven't gotten it yet, but I will be trying it. I'm not saying you got to go do 100 BV auto ship every single month. I am saying, <laughs> Savannah, I am saying you need to get one product on your auto ship so you can use it every single month. And you say, well, I can't afford that. Honestly, you can't afford not to do that. Again, I'm not an advocate of like, oh, go spend all this money that you don't have, but you are looking to build a business with this. Now, I'm going to be completely transparent and a lot of leaders will disagree with me and that's okay. When you click submit and you get your starter kit, you don't have a business yet. You have a work from home job. Nothing wrong with it, but it's your job to turn that job into a business and to build something from there. Um, when I started this, I wouldn't say I was a business owner. I would say I'm a business owner now. I've evolved into a business owner. Um, so that's something to take in consideration. When you're building a business, you are going to have overhead. And yes, that's why. You need to show yourself using the products. But even beyond that, you can talk about the product without showing that you're using it. Like, for example, I use the cleanse every month. I rarely show it, but I do talk about it in my conversations because that's what I host to post about a lot. So I can honestly get in a conversation like, dude, I use it. This is how it tastes. I love it. You're going to grow confidence, which grows your mindset about the products if you actually use them. Now, if you're brand new, that's okay. You're in the growing phase. You can borrow other people's confidence. You can talk to anyone on our team. If you, I saw Mandy on here, I think, I don't know if she's still on here. Um, I don't see her anymore, but I don't see a lot of the people anymore. Um, if you're on Mandy's team, you can talk to anyone on Mandy's team and they can tell you their testimonials with the products. If you're on Savannah's team, same thing. You can, they can tell you their, their testimonials with the products and you can borrow from that until you get your own. But that only lasts for so long. If you're talking to someone and they say, okay, have you used the coffee? And you say, no, but I've only been in for a couple of weeks. I've got an order, like it's coming. But my friend Mandy makes it all the time and she loves it and tell her story. It's this price. Is that in your budget tonight? They're not going to care that you've not tried it because you told them you're brand new. Now, if you say, no, I haven't tried it. You know, I've, I've been in for like a year. I just, I haven't been able to afford it. Uh, red flag. I'm not trusting you to, to join a business. Now, if you say, oh, I haven't tried it. I don't really like coffee, but I do love our fill in the blank. You know, but I know you're talking about coffee tonight. It's this much. Again, it's not a red flag because you're telling them a legitimate reason of like, 
I can't take it because I can't have caffeine or whatever your reason is. Not everyone can take every product. People understand that. When you say things like, I've been in the business for two years and I just haven't cared enough to try it, that's a red flag. Wording is key, absolutely. Um, I tell people all the time, the only thing I advocate faking till you make it, fake it till you make it, is confidence. Because confidence doesn't, Mel Robbins said it the best, confidence is not something that you just get. Confidence comes when you do the action. You don't get confident until you do the action. Anyone that tells you otherwise is, is lying or they're like a Martian. <laughs> like confidence does not come until you do the action. Every time I hit live or get on a training, either one, I'm not confident. I wasn't confident when I started this. As I go through, I get confident and that confidence like ex expounds. Is that the right word? Expounds maybe. Um, because I'm putting forth the action. So you've got to fake it till you make it for the beginning so you can have your confidence grow. And that's with the products, with the business. Now, as you're going through, again, you are educating yourself. You're trying the products. You're reading books. Um, for the products, it works product coach. It's phenomenal. Go read up. Pick one product a day. Spend five minutes and read up on it. Keto tea. Okay. Um, <laughs> someone's asking for a script. You should be on the training. Um, anyways, one, one product a day. So how many of y'all have heard the saying, your vibe attracts your tribe? I think that's the cheesiest saying ever. I hate it. But it makes sense when you think about it. Your tribe is your, are your distributors, basically. Your vibe is your attitude and your mindset. The better attitude, attitude the more confident you portray yourself, guess what kind of quality distributors that you're, you're attracting? I can tell you this from experience. My husband can tell you. How many rock stars did I, did I enroll in the beginning of my business? Um, Savannah's like, listen, I was going to say at least one. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, the answer is none. And I'm, Savannah knows this. Like when I say rock star, I'm saying the people that jump in and they jump in head foot and they start enrolling. Now, you'll enroll some people that I at least had a halfway decent, like, attitude, and I enrolled some people with some halfway decent attitudes. None of us knew what we were doing, but we were hard workers because like attracts like. But when it came to my confidence in the business and in the industry, yeah, that wasn't there. I was not enrolling people who were like, oh, I'm gung-ho on this industry. I'm going to run. I was enrolling people who were questioning and complaining just like I was. If prices were increased on a product, I, my inbox was full of people complaining. If, goodness, they announced a training that we had to pay for, girl, you better believe everyone's complaining, and I was right along with them. If anything was changed, you know, we were all in there like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. If somebody was negative, we sat and talked about it for 30 minutes instead of like, okay, bye, next. Now, we just had the coffee get increased from $39 to $49. I can honestly say my first reaction wasn't negative. Now, this is like the first, the first time for that, because that's what I work on the most is mindset. Um, my reaction was, okay, I'm not the one paying the bills to keep a corporation open. And I also see the value in it because I drink the coffee. I don't mind paying three, like 325 for a cup of coffee that tastes as good as Starbucks. When I go to Starbucks and get the same thing for like $5.50, $6, depending on what size I'm ordering. This man can tell you how many times I used to make him take me to Starbucks between church services, after church, before church. We spent a lot of money on Starbucks. All the time. And he wasn't a fan. Like, he would even tell me, do you really need, yes, I really need Starbucks. You drink your nasty little 99 cent Dunkin' Donuts and take me to get my $6 coffee. Thank you. And we would legit argue about it sometimes. Now, in good humor, because you know, you just compromise on things. And I wasn't spending money that like should have been our mortgage money, but it got expensive. So I don't mind paying half the price for the same quality coffee. Um, so first thing is enroll more people. Second thing is focus on your work ethic. Third thing is focus on your mindset. Now, if you have, do not follow Ashley Mayfield and you have any skepticism when it comes to the industry, so network marketing, MLM, um, direct sales, what else are we called? Anything else we can think of? 
There's so many names for network marketing. I think those are the three main ones I can think of. Those are the three. Um, follow Ashley Mayfield. I put her link in there. She talks a lot about the industry and a lot about belief in the industry. Um, I'm posting this. If y'all don't know, I create content for the, the It Works VIP training group a week in advance. So this post hasn't been put out yet, but I already wrote it up. It just hasn't been like, it's scheduled. Um, somebody came to me and said, yeah, I don't like um, posting who wants to make an extra, you know, $500 or so before Christmas because I can't make that much in four months. I don't really believe anybody can. My first reaction was, oh, that makes sense. Like, you know, it's really hard to make $500 in four months. No. It's not really hard. It just because you didn't do it doesn't mean they can't do it. No, I didn't do it in my first four months. But I also, again, look at my work ethic. I didn't deserve $500 in my first five months or four months. There were days, literally, I was like, oh, man, I messaged 10 people a day. Like, I work so hard. Not talk to 10 people. I messaged 10 people, which means I talked to, like, one. Um, and I posted, you know, 15 different products on my page. Man, I deserve a pay raise. So... It, it's one of those things that you have to get your mindset right. And Ash, it's funny because as soon as, as I said that to myself, God was like, um, just because you didn't do it doesn't mean other people can't. How many people do you know that made $500 their first couple of months? I can name dozens on our team specifically, whether it was through fast starts, whether it was through um, sample cash. We do a lot of sample cash on our team whether it was through actual commissions, like they enrolled a buttload of customers. I, I can count a lot that made more than $500 their first couple months, let alone their first four. So if you have someone sign up right now, I'm gonna read your comment, Mandy, because I can't read it all. Might have taken me almost four years to a diamond, but I have so much confidence coaching. Yes. Like I have no skepticism with the industry whatsoever. Now the biggest thing, new people will ask, are you a pyramid scheme? You know what I tell them? I'm not sure. What do you, what do you mean pyramid scheme? You know, they always say you get money for, you get money if I enroll or only the top people make money. I mean, oh no, we're not a pyramid scheme. I don't even give them the time of day to explain why that statement is false because I, the industry is not on trial. I don't need to explain to you why it's wrong. All I need to explain to you is, oh no, that's not what this is. That's it. Like they don't need any more info because they're asking about the wrong thing. A pyramid scheme is literally basically when, I think it used to be called a Ponzi scheme as well. I believe that was another name for it, but it was only money was involved. It was kind of like actually a, a perfect example of a pyramid scheme. Drop me a two if you saw a few months ago, the loom thing that was going around Facebook. Have you put in a hundred dollars and then you're gonna get $800 back when you like get to the middle of the circle or something. That is a prime example of a pyramid scheme. They're not trying to sell you anything. They're not trying to help you build a business. They're not trying to help you build a sales team, which is what we do. We build sales teams, regardless if you're focusing on the marketing side where the sales come a little bit more naturally or the sales side where you're a little bit more aggressive with the selling. Again, either way is right. You just pick which one you wanna do. Um, and I know Mandy and I actually kind of do the opposite. I focus a lot more on the marketing. She focuses a lot more on the sales. We both make money. We don't care what the other person is doing. We focus on what we focus on. But at the end of the day, we're not telling anyone to PayPal us $100. And if they get eight people to PayPal them, they get $800. That is a pyramid scheme. I can tell you I've worked in sales jobs a lot. And I've built sales teams. And I always got a, a cut of their sales because I coach them and I train them to be good salesmen. So we're doing the same thing. We just are doing it online instead of going to a place of business and working for them. He worked for a Kirby sales company and he never built a sales team. He had the option and he could have, but why is the reason you didn't build a sales team? I, in my head, know why. We've never talked about this. I'm putting him on the spot, but I want to use this as an example. Why did I never choose to build a sales Like, team? why didn't you tell your friends that you knew that worked, that lived around here to go work with you? Oh, because I hated my job. Did you make a lot of money? <laughs> no. 
Did you get good coaching? No. Did you have leaders that ran with integrity? No, not at all. <laughs> Guys, that's how this is. Like, I've had people ask me, oh, show me somebody who makes a lot of money that doesn't build a team. I can't. Not because it's not possible. I know looking at the compensation plan, you can make, I would say it's going to cap around $3,000 a month unless you're like a giant, giant enroller. Um, if you just want to do customers, and it's going to take you a couple years to get there. Because again, I explored that option. I was so dead set on not building a team. But once you start making some money, it's almost like you just get really excited. You want to show other people how to make money. Like when I, my friend is telling me about how, you know, I wish I had extra money, but my husband has me on a strict allowance. I'm like, dude, let me tell you what I'm doing. Like, I want to share it with them. Now, if I hated this and I thought I was lying to people and, you know, whatever, I would not be excited to share it with people that I know, because in my opinion, I'm putting my name on it. Like, I know I'm not, it's it works. Like I don't own the company. I'm not the CEO of it works. But I'm the CEO of my brand, and my brand just happens to be funded by It Works. Y'all, y'all understand that? Like, I'm not writing anyone's paychecks, but I sure can tell people, hey, like, I do affiliate marketing for a lot of companies. It Works pays me the most. Guys, I do affiliate marketing for Amazon. Do you know who pays me more? It Works. I think Amazon's a much bigger company than It Works. I haven't looked at it, but I'm pretty sure that that's the case. Like, you know they don't pay me as much. So you can, you can kind of leverage that as well when you're talking to people like, oh, I have a big network. I get brand deals all the time. Okay, how many of those brand deals pay your mortgage? This is better. So when it comes to mindset, follow Ashley. And then there's a few books that I put down there. Um, GoPro, seems like everyone is in network marketing. Um, I can tell you there's a lot of people not in network marketing, but there's a lot of people, or okay, there's a lot of people that may tiptoe into network marketing and they may sign up with a bunch of companies. Very few people are actually in network marketing and are professionals. So yes and no. Um, and I've had people come to me that join this team and they turn into professionals because I coach them into professionals that have been quote unquote in network marketing for years and never made any money. Doesn't matter how many companies you sign up with. If you're not in network marketing, you're not making any money. Um, GoPro is one that is very good on just giving you confidence in the industry itself. So if you are skeptical about network marketing, read GoPro. Um, your first year in network marketing, that is a really good one. I haven't read yet. Amanda, I just looked up the reviews. Amanda Hughes actually just told me about it tonight. If you're brand new, and you've never been in any network marketing company before, I would actually read that before I read GoPro. Um, it's one thing it talks about is how one of the biggest mistakes new people make is they jump from company to company to company. They don't actually stick with one. Oh yeah, Julie said GoPro is free on YouTube. If you, um, someone else said that in the group today too, I don't remember who it was. If you have the link and wanna put it in here, somebody can copy and paste it. Y'all can copy and paste it. Otherwise, being honest, it's like $12 if you want to read the hard copy. It's not super expensive. Um, drop me down a three in the chat if you have been with more than one network marketing company. I'm not saying like one at a time, but if it works as not your very, very first home, drop me down a three. And I have three on there. I tried several before this. But again, I was, the only, I was in one and I took it real serious but there were a lot of flaws in that company. I was quote unquote in a few of them that didn't, um, I just didn't take them serious. Jamie, if they ask you to post, you say no, that's what you do. Um, also look at how are you friending people? If you're going from the suggested friends, don't go off of that list at all. Savannah, you're saying you did not enjoy GoPro? No? <laughs> I didn't say that. I said no, I'm asking. And 
because I didn't like it the first time I read it, but I was like very new to network marketing. And it's kind of, in my opinion, it's kind of a deep book. But so that's what I thought you were saying. You said you, what are you saying you didn't like? Thrifty? No, that's somebody else. That's not me. Oh, just kidding. It's okay. Never mind. A different <laughs> Savannah. I just saw back to back. I was like, oh, that's bold to be like, I read GoPro. I hated it. <laughs> um, so first year network marketing. Hey, Glory, cover your ears. Um, you are a badass and you are a badass at making money. Those are ones you do not listen to around your kids. Put some earbuds in. She says the F word like every couple of paragraphs, but they have, they're really good. I would read both of them if you are struggling with self-belief in yourself. Not necessarily the um, industry, although that's, I think she does touch on it a little bit. I don't remember, but yourself for sure. Um, and another one I did not link down here, keep your ears plugged, didn't link down here is get over your damn self. That one is written by a top network marketing person in, I think, Rodan and Fields. Um, but she does not, okay, you can unplug now. She does not um, hit heavy on like her business or anything. She doesn't, I wouldn't know she was Rodan and Fields, except I'm nosy, so I looked her up. I was like, oh, who's this lady? She knows what you're about. Um, so she is, it's not one that she's going to like try to cross recruit you or nothing. But it is definitely one where you can tell she knows her stuff and she has gone through the ranks with us. I didn't link that in here. So it has a little bit of network marketing, a lot of like, for example, oh, you don't want to post because you don't people make fun of you. Get over it. Oh, you don't want to message because you feel like it's going to offend, offend people. Get over it. Like it's very red, very in your face, but in a good way. And then the last one, so that was my husband. I was like, you just sat here and farted. Nope, it's the six-year-old behind us. Um, the last one is How to Be a Boss by Lily Singh. She's a comedian, but she, and people write her off. I remember I, I read the book like a long time ago. And I posted about reading the book. And I posted about one of the quotes that she said. And my sister-in-law was like, oh, she's a comedian. I would never take business advice from her. I'm like, first off, listen, Linda, you ain't in a business at all. So it don't even matter. Like, I wouldn't take business advice from you either. But then I started thinking, I was like, yes, she's a comedian. But she's a self-made comedian. She built, I don't know if you, if y'all don't know who Lily Singh is. She built, she's like, she went to college. I think she graduated, not 100% on that, but I know she went. Um, Cause I want to say she graduated and then she decided to build on YouTube and her dad was like, uh, what are you doing? Like, this is stupid. Cause they're an Indian family. So obviously like there's a little bit of a stigmatism on education and like not using it, I guess, and not make, being successful. Um, so she took nothing, went to YouTube, built up an entire brand, turned it into where she toured all over the world. She has a clothing line now. I know that she's written at least that book, maybe more, probably has a podcast. I don't follow her super much. Like she's not really my brand. She's funny, but she's not someone that I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to be just like you. So, you know, we all have those people we vibe with, but mad respect because again, she built an entire business, an entire brand out of nothing. What are we all doing? Y'all, It Works is not your brand. It Works is the company behind you that happens to be paying for what you want. Your brand is whatever your brand is. My brand is Helping Hearts Homeschooler. Anyone that follows me on Instagram, you know that. And you know that I work with several different companies and several different brands. Like I have, we got home from our little month long work trip for him, vacation for me, because you know, I was just working from the hot tub most of the time. Um, and he gets home, tell him how many packages we had on the table. The table was almost covered. Yeah, and his first respect, I, I know he looked at me like, did you buy all this crap? No, it all came free because people want me to review it using my brand that It Works paid for me to build. So, and I'm not saying that to flight It Works at all. For me personally, I do not want to be the face of It Works. That is not my long-term goal. It works as the vessel that is getting me to build my brand, build my own company, build my own business, and be able to go out and branch out and help other people do the same. I'll tell you until you're blue in the face, if you do not have a network, you have no idea how to use social media and you're wanting to build a business, start with network marketing. In a good company, in a good team, they're not all created equal, but boom, 
that will launch you so fast. Like I haven't told him this yet, so he can close his ears, but I've already been looking at getting um, a merch line going. That would be a launch off of the brand that I built on Instagram because of it works. So it's just multiple streams of Avenue coming in all because I got really good at it works and I'm getting really good and I'm going to be, we are going to be, cause he's building it too, but we mainly build on one account. So, you know, he is me, even the, the distributors that he signs, we do it on one account um, for the most part, but we're going to be ambassador and black diamond. Like this is going to be our biggest stream of income. And then it's going to allow us to have branches of income that we can turn around and impact people outside of network marketing that maybe have nothing to do with network marketing. But we're always going to know in the back of our mind, okay, you may not like network marketing, but I'm able to set up this homeless shelter in your city because of network marketing. I'm able to create this boys and girls club basically, which is what I kind of have in my head. Um, and for a lot of kids whose parents may think network marketing is a complete joke and there may be a little, you know, uppity people, and in the back of my mind, no, you know what? It works as literally paying for this, but that's okay. You don't need to know that. Um, so the belief in the company, get it strong because that is what's going to build your team of people, customers and distributors both. And then the last thing, because we are almost out of time, is you got to get out of your comfort zone. So again, how you build your paycheck. Enroll more people, which means you've got to examine your work ethic. And then you've got to examine your mindset. You can work on both of those. All of those are skills. You just got to read the books and do the things. And then four is get out of your comfort zone. So again, in the, ch in the chat, go ahead and comment. What is the hardest thing for you about this business? Is it talking to people? Is it sealing the deal? Is it going live? Is it sending cold messages? Is it asking people to post for you? Is it asking, is it your friends and family seeing your posts and they may make fun of them? Like, what is your hard? What is your comfort zone? I was listening to a sermon with Pastor Jeremy Foster. Talking about me and going live. Mindset, going live, knowledge I don't have. People posting for me at this point. Talking to people because my anxiety, telling my story. Talking to people, it's harder than I thought. Those are all valid, valid answers. Going live and being truthful about my why, even though it'll hurt my family. Alicia, depending on what you're talking about, um, that's something I had to deal with too. Um, most of y'all know, well, not most of y'all, some of y'all know that I come from a background, a lot of abuse in the home, um, pretty much a deadbeat dad for the majority of my life. Um, the majority of the time he was alive, rather not my life, because he died when I was nine. So that's very, very limited time. Um, an alcoholic mom that kind of disengaged for a few years after he died. Um, I became an addict. I struggled with a lot of things. When I started going live and telling my story, and I remember one, like the first time I told that I dropped out of school in seventh grade, to pay my mom's bills because she wasn't. And I remember, first off, I prepped my mom. So if you have a good relationship with your family, you can prep your family because it was honest and I didn't, like it's gonna paint her in a bad light, but again, it was honest. And that is part of my story. That's part of the reason that I pushed so hard to give Gloria a better life. But I've told her, I've like, I, I've gotten over the point of blaming you for things which again, that's because of this business because I struggled with that for a long time. Um, I'm not, and even on the, on the video, when I share my story, I tell people I love my mom dearly. We're friends now. Like, I don't blame her for anything. A lot of it was I don't think she was given the tools to be a very good mom, but I'm sure from a mom's perspective, that's still not easy for her to hear. And I know she watches my videos because she'll randomly share them. Some, she doesn't know how to use Facebook a lot. So sometimes she thinks she's sharing them on her page and she'll forward them to people like just send them in a message. Sometimes she thinks she's sharing something in a message and she posts it publicly. I'm like, mom, go delete that. Um, so, but I'm sure it's not easy for her to hear things. Now, my brothers and sisters, I have a brother that completely disowned me because of this business. But you can ask my husband, he had disowned me several times before this. He would always come back when he needed something. Um, 
he kind of got to the point of, oh, you just think you're better than us. I don't think I'm better than you. I think I'm making better choices than you are. And I also invited you to do this with me, but you didn't want to. But anytime any of my family needs money or wants something, and I'm a little bit more, I would be a little bit more apt to send them money. He's the one that's like, nope. And not in a mean way, but he levels me out of, I'm like, you know, I just want to help them help them. And he reminds me like, you're not helping them. You're enabling them at that point. Um, and my mom, I can honestly say is not one like that. I don't think she's ever asked us for money for anything, even though she knows that we have more than she does, but the siblings have, and they all watched videos. They've all made comments. You know, they've all blocked me at some point or another, minus my youngest brother. He's a little more level-headed, but if you have a family who's kind of dysfunctional, you making yourself better and sharing your story, you may think, oh, they're blocking me because it's hurting them. No, they're blocking you because they're jealous and they can't see, they can't, uh, what am I trying to say? They can't deal with you lifting yourself up out of that. When I lifted myself up out of what my family is and what they are, and I love them to death, they like, we invite them, you know, they live hours and hours away, but I bring my mom down anytime that I can. We visit them. Um, my mom's the only one that probably does understand at this point of like, you're building a better life for your family than what I was able to give to you. She's also my mom. So the older and wiser you get, it doesn't matter the amount of victim mentality you have you start seeing things a little bit clearer. You should at least, most people do. My siblings are all younger than me. So I'm 30. Think about if you're someone on here who's ever had a victim mentality or like that welfare mentality of like people owe me things. Think about how reasonable you were in your 20s with somebody like us coming and saying, well, you're making the choice to continue this. Like you can choose to get out of it at any time. I can tell you I wasn't that reasonable, so I try to not hold it against my siblings. It frustrates me to no end when I see them posting things on Facebook or complaining. I'm like, literally, it's your choice. Wake up. But I also try to put myself in their shoes of like, we were dealt a pretty bad lot in life as kids. Like, as kids, it's not your choice. And I fully believe when you turn 18, and this has nothing to do with skin color, but when you turn 18, there are people that have more privilege and people who have less privilege. There are people who are set up for success in life and there are people who are not. When you turn 18, it is not even. They're absolutely like, there are people way ahead of the game and people behind in the game. And it has everything to do with your parents and the choices they made for you. So when we turned 18, I can tell you like Brett's family, for example, they would have been at the starting line, or I would say a little bit ahead of the starting line, because their parents did equip them with certain, like, business knowledge and just becoming decent citizens. We were, like, way back, you know, miles and miles from the starting line. So we had to catch up a lot of ground to be, like, a normal 18-year-old and what we should have been. So I'll give my siblings a little bit of credit, and anyone on here, you've struggled with that. Like, you, trust me, you got a little bit of credit. I understand you had to make up a lot of ground to get where you are. Where some people, it's not fair, but they did start out ahead of you in life when they were legally adults. That doesn't give you permission now to keep using that as an excuse and a crutch to not better yourself in this business. So it's just one of those things like, yes, life's not fair. And you know what? Life's not going to be fair for a lot of my, my daughter's friends because she is going to be ahead of them when she turns 18 because I'm making dang sure of it, because I am making the choices today to give her that privilege. And she doesn't need to feel sorry for it. Like, you know, she did nothing for it. She, she doesn't need to be sorry for it. She doesn't need to be proud of it. She did nothing to get there at that point. But she's going to be there, and she's going to make the most of it. I use my anger to fuel my business. Yeah, for sure. Um, so get out of your comfort zone. For some of you, it's live videos. Some of you, it's the host to post. Some of you, it's messaging. Don't be too good to message, guys. Uh, Tamara, I don't think is on here, but she's somebody. She put a post up for me because I messaged her. Like, I had, I was going through my friends list. I messaged her several times the last couple of years with no response. I didn't know her at all. And so I said, hey, girl, quick question. Deleted her because I was just going through my friends list. 
asked her to host a post for me. I'm not fake. I'm not going to be like, hey, I see, like, I love your page. No, girl, you ignored me for two years. I didn't even look at your page at this point. But I was like, I'll give her a chance to be in the cast drawing before I, you know, take her off my page. She posted for me, and then I was like, hey, like, you know, if you ever want to do this, let me know if you'd be interested. She said yes, gave her the info, signed up. She's one of the hardest working new distributors I have signed in a long time. She's like going, she's doing the training, she's asking the questions, I'm Zooming with her tomorrow. So you're not too good to message, I promise you, and some of your best recruits are gonna come from messaging because they just haven't seen your stuff. Um, it's not gonna be easy. You can stay where you're at if you don't wanna progress, but you can't stay where you're at if you wanna build your paycheck. So something, and I think by now, every one of you in your head, you know what God's telling you, you've gotta start doing or stop doing. Now it's just, you've got to do it. Um, and then that's the third thing under that is you just have to do it. So I think we covered a lot. I hope this actually recorded. It's right at eight o'clock. So I stayed right on time. Um, make sure there's no other questions in here. All right, I think I got everybody answered. So have an awesome rest of your Monday. Next week, we may be hearing a training from this dude. Maybe. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm not, you're stupid. Um, but I know we've talked about a lot over the last month or two, so. All right, bye. say bye. Bye. All right, guys, see you later. Bye.